Hello and welcome to this video where we're going to take a look at Cubase 10.5's changes to the EQ section, some of which are merely cosmetic, but some of which are functional and the comparison EQ section, which is probably the thing which is most interesting about it here. So this is just a project which I dug up from a school recording of a song, which hopefully I won't get a copyright strike for, but you never know these days. Out of the dark. So we'll keep that to a minimum just in case. Um, here's the EQ section. So firstly, the cosmetic changes. So the way that you get rid of these, etc., is now done with the settings here. So you can turn the controls on or off if you want to get a bigger EQ section because the section's a little bit under size otherwise. And you can pick whether they're sliders or knobs, much as you could do before, but you used to cycle through three things. You've also got the ability to turn off or on the uh, pre-EQ curve, so for instance here, with it turned on, play this, we'll see. So here you can see the effect of the original, or rather the original versus the effect. So you'll see that again. Yeah, etc. So you get the idea there. Now, those are cosmetic changes, uh, useful though they may be. Uh, the other one is that rather than just dots with a number next to them, we've now got circles and much clearer indication of what's going on. So, for instance, if we have two bands of EQ working at the same time, whichever one you have highlighted, you can see that's the actual band in white and then the overall effect is shown in blue and that's the effect of that band shown in white. So this is much clearer than it used to be. It's a nice improvement. I kind of wish it was resizable more and you could have the controls present as well as the larger EQ display but there we go you can't have everything where would you put it as uh, a very wise man used to say to me but the most important part about this is the comparison section so this allows you to pick uh, two channels and look at them and EQ them uh, in in concert with each other which makes it really much easier to do this task so it's a kind of a thing that I've been banging on about for I don't know, 20 years or whatever, where you, you give to one channel effectively and take away from another is a common use case for this kind of thing. So here we're going to turn the comparison on. So this is always the channel that you're on. So you, you, you can't select that channel, but here we can select our comparison channel. So here we're going to pick uh, the backing vocal channel. You can pick any uh, audio from within your project, but here I'm going to pick the backing vocals. And when we play it now, we can see both of them. So we see the FFT in blue for our lead vocals and then in red by default for the backing vocal. So we can see there's quite a lot of overlap, etc., between the two. But that's already useful because it means you can see what frequencies are present in each uh, track on screen you can flick between them. So here we are now altering the EQ of the backing vocal. So you can see that that low frequency cut has gone. Whereas when I click back on here, we're back on this lead vocal channel. Um, and you can pick between the two, which is really useful. So for instance, let's say I've decided I want to make the backing vocals much thinner. So I may turn on, I may even turn on low cut and just drag that up even further or possibly use low etc but whichever one I was going to use we can now see the comparison between the two but actually I'm going to turn that one off I'm going to turn band one on instead and just just nudge the cue down a bit so we don't get a little hump in there uh, and then flicking between the two we can see the effect and we can see those different bands and hopefully you can see the colors uh, there, they're certainly pretty clear. I think they've chosen this because the previous colors certainly weren't that clear to me. Uh, you may not know. Why would you? I'm colorblind. So some UI choices aren't particularly good. So although this does look a bit like, you know, uh, the fairground lights, it's it's certainly not subtle, but it's it's nice and easy to see the difference between the two and you can change it anyway. So you can configure it back to the blue and green or whatever you were happy with before. Um, but we can make more changes and handily in the project you can solo them so you could solo just the backing vocal even though we're eqing the lead vocal or we can solo just the lead vocal or we can solo both now obviously in the context of this i've got all these soloed anyway because uh copyright strikes etc um but you can do this it means you don't have to jump out 
go to the channels, turn them all off, you know, mute them or do your soloing, etc. You can just do it really quickly here. But most importantly, we can flip between these two channels. So if we wanted to add, let's say we wanted to cut a bit of that area here out of the backing vocal so we can quickly, sorry, slightly slack on my Mac. So we can just quickly switch that there. Just take a bit of that sort of presence and harshness out of that. And then switch back to the lead vocal. Maybe give the lead vocal just a bit more of that. Not obviously using that. There we go. That kind of thing. And then switching between the two, we can see we've got a bit there. And maybe we're just going to make the backing vocals even thinner, etc. So it's nice and quick and easy to switch between those two channels. Often I find when I'm doing drums, I will keep on the channel that I'm interested in here, but then maybe see if there's a, a clash with another one, particularly if you've got you know a dance track where you've got five, six, seven different hi-hat loops, etc. And they're, they're, you want to try and separate them out. So this makes it much nicer and quicker to do. And it's certainly sped up the amount of time uh, I'm spending uh, doing this kind of work. So it's sort of workmanlike the everyday stuff of mixing. So where you're you're trying to create pockets of frequencies for different uh, different sounds, etc. Using this has made it much easier. And in fact, just having the ability to solo two tracks quickly on their own is is useful because often you want to check whether they are working together and so on. Uh, but being able to change your reference, etc., the comparison track. Uh, really quickly has has vastly sped up the way that I'm working with EQ and Cubase. And that's it for this video. So hopefully you found that useful. And if you have, please like and subscribe and I'll see you again soon.